Hi there, Richard Billy Coughlin, 666. How are you? And today I'm going to be responding to a video uh, that's incredibly popular on YouTube. It's been around for a little while, only a few months though. Uh, so big and popular has it been that it's actually captured the attention of several mainstream media and news outlets, certainly here in the UK, and it's simply known as the Muslim Demographics video. As someone on YouTube who gets put in the YouTube atheist category, there are certain unque unpardonable outrages here on YouTube and as an atheist, and one of them is defending Muslims, which is what this is going to be seen as. However, what I'm going to be trying to do here is defend and speak out on behalf of reality and against lies and plain bigotry. Whilst there are some people out there who'd like to put me in the PC Brigade category, or the Islamo Sympathizer, whatever the fuck that is, the fact is this, if you're not going to accept reality, and you're going to make shit up, and you're only going to accept things on the basis that they support your own preconceived notion, and if you still carry on perpetuating the lie, and you fail to justify the belief that goes against all claims, then you are, as anyone else would be, a fundamentalist. You are deluding yourself. And I will always speak up on behalf of what I consider right. This is not a defense of Muslims or Islam. If, if I was that keen on defending it, don't you think I'd join them? And some people will always say, oh, well, you're just scared to say things against Muslims. And I'll say, bollocks. I've done jokes about suicide bombers, I've done jokes about Mohammed being a paedophile, and I've done several videos responding to people who are Muslims. I've had Muslim death threats like the rest of us. The Muslim Demographics video. This video is basically, um, how can I look at this objectively? It's a, a piece of right-wing, fundamentalist, fucking fear-mongering, nationalistic, white power bullshit. Now I would ask one favour of everyone. Before you comment, please watch the whole video from beginning to end. Because it's important that you take all of this in. Now let's start the video, shall we? According to research. According to research? Hmm, really? Any idea? Can you give us a clue? Where that research came from? Who did it? How objective and fair is it? How reliable is it? Oh, you didn't do that, did you? Oh, sorry. You could, that slipped your mind. Because you thought, oh, we'll just, you know, it's a, we've done the research, so we'll just, we'll just, we won't bother telling them. No, they won't care about that. In order for a culture to maintain itself for more than 25 years. I should point out at this time that when the guy says culture, um, he's not using it in the popular sense that most of us probably would assume. He actually means um, white Christian. There must be a fertility rate of 2.11 children per family. With anything less, the culture will decline. Historically, no culture has ever reversed a 1.9 fertility rate. A rate of 1.3, impossible to reverse. Because it would take 80 to 100 years to correct itself. Well done, you've just debunked yourself. First of all, you say it's impossible to re reverse, then you say it would take 80 to 100 years to correct itself. Well, it's not impossible to reverse, then. It just takes a long time. In other words, if two sets of parents each have one child... Yeah? ...there are half as many children as parents. I never figured that, did you? If those children have one child, then there are one-fourth as many grandchildren. Oh my god, you are blinding me with science! Have you got any fucking source for this? <laughs> if only a million babies are born in 2006, it's hard to have two million adults enter the workforce in 2026. He is on the money here. As of 2007, the fertility rate in France was 1.8. <gasps> England, 1.6. <gasps> Greece, 1.3. <gasps> Germany, 1.3. Italy, 1.2. Spain, 1.1. Across the entire European Union of 31 countries, the fertility is a mere 1.38. Historical research tells us these numbers are impossible to reverse. These are the official European statistics offices. In 1995, Italy had a fertility rate of 1.19, which according to you is irreversible, or it would take 100 years to correct. Uh, in 2006, it's 1.35. 11 years. Uh, in 1995, Spain had a fertility rate of 1.16, and in 2007, they have a fertility rate of 1.4. 
And in the UK, well, this is according to the UK official, the UK Office of National Statistics, 2001, we had a fertility rate of 1.63. And in 2007, we have a fertility rate of 1.92. Now, the rest of them, they are, they're pretty much uh, uh, are what they said they are, but they are increasing. They have all been increasing. All of them. Didn't say that. In a matter of years, Europe, as we know it, will cease to exist. Oh my god, it will cease to exist. No, there will just be different people on it. A hundred years ago, we were in the course of having the first of two world wars. Of course it's going to be different, you fucking plum duff. Yet the population of Europe is not declining. Oh, I see. We see where he's going here. Why? Immigration. <gasps> immigration! <laughs> Islamic immigration. Islamic immigration! Everybody panic now! Of all population growth in Europe. No, it's not like if I start talking about Islam, they get the old la, 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 music going in. Could you make it a bit more obvious? Since 1990, 90% has been Islamic immigration. First of all, there is no such thing as Islamic immigration. From the official European statistics offices, yes, occasionally it c the population growth can be put down to 90% of immigration. On average, it's usually about 60 to 70% of immigration. And that includes all immigrants in Europe. Now, bearing in mind that if you're in a European Union country, country you can uh, go through from country to country as you please. So that number is not only overinflated, it's incredibly misleading. France, 1.8 children per family. Muslims, 8.1. <laughs> Oh God, how do they have time for all this terrorism when they're too busy shagging all the time? 8.1, the, the Muslim women, no wonder they wear burqas, they've probably got stitches up to their fucking forehead. The French census, unfortunately, um, does not collect data on a religious, religious affiliation. France is not a very religious country, it hasn't been for a very long time. However, the two countries responsible for the most uh, amount of Muslims immigrating into uh, France will be Algeria and Morocco. The birth, birth rate of Algeria and Morocco is 2.38. That's according to the UK. That's according to the UK World Population Prospects in 2008. Maybe it's just France. You know, maybe they get to France and they, you know, they just be like, hey, let's make love. I don't know. But the bullshit. By 2027, one in five Frenchmen will be Muslim. Oh my God! One in five. Oh, they'll be Muslim and French. Oh, uh, so they'll be warmongering cowards. No. There are now more mosques than churches. Oh my god, there are more mosques. Well, what do you... Well, they've got to go somewhere, mate. What do you want? What do you want them to do? So what? There are more mosques than churches. Whilst there's no source for this statistic, even if that's true, so what? You, I could look at certain parts of America and see that there are places with less cultured people in them. But you've got to ask the question, has that got anything to do with fertility? Or is it just because of segregation? Is it just because... Is it a natural human instinct? I don't know. But I'm not making the claim. In the last 30 years, the Muslim population of Great Britain rose from 82,000 to 2.5 million, a 30-fold increase. Okay, first of all, there is again no real official data collected on religious affiliation. However, the estimation that 82,000 Muslims are in this country is actually uh, one of the few numbers this guy gives, which is an underestimation. It's actually, he's actually deflated it. In 1981, there was no question asked about religious affiliation, so there's no way we can actually know. But if you take, again, uh, the countries that are responsible for the most Muslims immigrating here were Pakistan and Bangladesh. And if you go by that, there were probably about 300,000. But because you're starting from a... You, you want to make it look like that number's increased, so you say a shorter number. And because there's no way you can really say it. There are over 1,000 mosques, many of them former churches. Oh, my God! What is wrong with you? We can't please you, can you? If, if you, you know, you moan about the fact that they build more mosques than churches, and then you moan about the fact that they use old churches. Good! Use the churches! In this country, we have a 20% fucking att attendance rate at church. That includes people who have weddings and funerals who ain't fucking religious in the first place. We don't go to fucking church. If, you know, I'd rather they did. Can't we just do a part X on fucking... Here we go, we'll give you a... We'll give you... We'll sell you a Catholic cathedral. No, none of us are fucking using it. You know, it's their fault. They're praying to the wrong God in there. I mean, God, Yahweh must be confused as fuck. In the Netherlands, 
50% of all newborns are Muslim, and in only 15 years, half of the population of the Netherlands will be Muslim. That one is hysterical, right? In du the Dutch official office of statistics, the Netherlands statistics, in Holland and the Netherlands, is 5%. And for half of the babies t being born in Holland to be Muslim, uh, they would have to be, the Muslim women would have to be giving birth at a rate that is 14 times greater than their non-Muslim uh, countrymen. 14 to fuck off. In Russia, there are over 23 million Muslims. That's one out of five Russians. 40% of the entire Russian army will be Islamic in just a few short years. Russia has historically, for a long time, for hundreds of years, had a great uh, Muslim population because they brought in uh, certain regions in the North Caucasus, which were, which were Muslim countries and Muslim areas, into the Russian, uh, as part, to become part of Russia. So they've always had that. That's nothing new. And the, the projection of 40% being uh, uh, Russian military, well, uh, that's, not re that's really based on the fact that Russia currently has, uh, has conscription. Um, but because the Russian, uh, there's such a big commitment in Russia at the moment to try and end conscription into the army, it's actually very unlikely that the, uh, the army in Russia will have uh, such a huge representative of Muslims. They'll actually be underrepresented. A real idea of how stupid that 40% estimation is. Th this was the question that was asked by the BBC. Um, they were put it to a guy called Dr. Jonathan Eel. Now, Dr. Jonathan Eel is the uh, Director of International Security uh, Standards at the Royal United Services Institute. This is an official voice on the subject, and he knows what he's talking about when it comes to the Russian military. And in his opinion, uh, the idea that the Russian army would be 40% Muslim in a few short years is, and I quote, complete poppycock. A phrase that has not been used since 1904. Currently in Belgium, 25% of the population and 50% of all newborns are Muslim. Belgium, right, the most boring place in the world. Did you know it has more motorway lighting than any other country? Uh, the Belgium, again, Belgium, official office of statistics, the uh, Muslim population of Belgium was representative of 6%. 6. Just 6. Six. Six. The government of Belgium has stated one third of all European children will be born to Muslim families by 2025, just 17 years away. The German government, the first to talk about this publicly. In other words, the Germans, the, you phoned the Germans up and they wanted fuck all to do with you. Recently released a statement saying... They released a statement. What that actually means is, uh, quote mine the fuck out of them. The fall in the German population can no longer be stopped. Its downward spiral is no longer reversible. It will be a Muslim state by the year 2050. Uh, you can see that he's quoted that, he's, he's attributed that quote to the uh, Federal Statistics Office. Uh, now, the, uh, the guy who was actually attributed to that particular quote was the Vice President, uh, Mr. Walter Rademacher. Herr Rademacher is now the official chief statistician for the EU. And this is what he said about that quote. The quotation which reads as if the German government believed that Germany would become a Muslim state is uh, simply not true. There is no source which can be quoted that the German government has published such kind of an expression or opinion. So I feel very mad. It's the situation where you as a statistician feel uh, very uncomfortable because the message of the publication has been turned upside down. I think this is the worst way to, to use statistical uh, data. And you don't like the Germans when they are mad. <laughs> There are currently 52 million Muslims in Europe. The German government said that number is expected to double in the next 20 years to 104 million. Really? Well, uh, uh, okay, let's Walter. Walter. Oi, Fritz. No, that is not true. The German government does not believe uh, that uh, the Muslim population will double in the next 40 or 50 years. There are no reliable sources that give a proof for that assumption. Between 2001 and 2006, Canada's population increased by 1.6 million. 1.2 of those, immigration. Again, this is 2001-2006. The number's not far off. The, uh, uh, the, it was 1.1 1 .1 
was immigration. But again, that was all immigration, not just Muslims. In 1970, there were 100,000 Muslims in America. Today, there are over 9 million. Uh, the Pew Institute, responsible for many polls, as you'll feel, the Pew poll, as you may hear often, the Pew poll estimated that in America right now, there are 2.35 million Muslims. Is that, if that's more closer. So that's actually less than what we've got in Britain, um, which was a bollocks number anyway. The world is changing. It's time to wake up. I'm not saying Islam is great and wonderful, and there were all fucking, and there's nothing that should be done. What I am saying is this. If you want to fucking argue a point, and you have to make shit up, or you have to lie, or mislead people, how fucking valid is your argument? I would rather that everybody sort of bothered let go of all this bullshit. But I'm not going to sit here and fucking let someone like this cunt sit there and blatantly lie just to spread his own message. If you're an atheist and you're watching this and you want to criticize me and accuse me of being one of these Islamic sympathizers who's letting him get away with murder, I want you to listen to this part of the end of this video. As believers, we call upon you to join the effort to share the gospel message with the changing world. This is a call to action. Yeah, you heard that right. Share the gospel. This is Christian fundamentalist propaganda. And if you're going to sit there and accuse me of defending Islam, then you are defending fundamentalist Christians just as much. And that is no better. Thank you very much. This is Richard David Coughlin, 666, saying good night. May God be less.